A few years ago, I was living in Tel Aviv, in a fashionable part of town, which used to be a working class area, but now the first few sushi bars and coffee shops were popping up as gentrification took its hold. And I was living in this tiny apartment with my girlfriend at the time, Keren. It was such a small place that if we had even one friend over for coffee, it felt crowded and the roof leaked every time it rained. But you know, we were in love. So for us, it felt like a palace. I stayed home most days uh, working on the book I was writing at the time, whilst Karen would go out to her job and yeah, she paid most of the rent, but I did the washing up and made sure there was a meal for her in the evenings and well, I'm I really wasn't sure what I had done to deserve her. She was smart and charming and drop dead beautiful. And she had this capacity to love, which touched me and inspired me. And at times it also scared me. It was one day in September, which in Israel is full summer. And the air is so sticky and humid that you come out of the shower feeling like you need another shower. And walking through the city streets is like walking through a pot of rice cooking. And so we headed on down towards the beach, Tel Aviv being a Mediterranean coast city. And we were walking down by the promenade when this thick black line appeared on the horizon and moments later beyond our wildest hopes big heavy storm clouds rolled in and the air filled with rain for the first time in six months and you could just feel this wave of relief as it swept through this hot dusty city and as for Keren and I we ran all the way home, jumping in puddles and splashing each other, getting soaked to the skin like kids, thinking only of the hot shower we'd have once we got home. But as we approached our apartment building, that was when Keren saw Bubsy, the pathetic, bedraggled little creature trembling in a shoebox we found by the side of the road. Generously assuming that my heart was as big as hers, Karen scooped it up and took it back into our apartment, into our home. She got a sheepskin from the cupboard and put our guest down on top of it and went off to the kitchen in search of a bowl of milk, allowing me to inspect this creature a bit more closely. At first I thought it was some kind of puppy dog, but now I wasn't so sure. It was so hairy, these thick black hairs covering it on all sides. It was hard to actually make out any kind of features beyond this irritating shiny black nose and these two eyes, two beady little eyes staring out from behind this mass of hairs. You don't mind, do you, Tommy? Keren asked me as she came back from the kitchen, reading the doubt on my face. I said, I, you know, what can it hurt for a night or two? Well, that evening, as we unfolded our sofa bed into our full bed, our living room was our bedroom too, we just turned off the lights and we began to hug each other in the dark when we heard... And I felt Karen grow tense in my arms in an unspoken plea. Yeah, okay, just for one night. And she kissed me on the cheek. I went off to bring Bubsy into our bed. Karen claimed she couldn't smell anything, but no matter which way I turned, it felt that this musty, unwashed smell of beast floated up into my nostrils. And what was worse, I had the distinct impression she was staring at me. 
And when I finally turned on the bedside lamp, sure enough, there she was, those little beady eyes staring out triumphantly between Karen's arms. And I made a face back at her, but Bubsy just stared right back at me. Finally, I grabbed a blanket. I went to sleep on the kitchen floor. The next morning, instead of being awoken with a kiss and a hug, I was given a handwritten list of instructions on how to take care of Bubsy during the day. Karen gathered her things, opened the door and went off to work. I stood up, my back hurting from sleeping on the kitchen floor all night, and I walked through to the living room to see that not only had Karen not folded away the sofa bed, but Bubsy was lying in the middle of it. I didn't know if it was some trick of the light, but she seemed at least twice as big as the night before. And I stepped forwards to pull the sheet out from under her when a rah! A flash of white teeth convinced me for the first time I might not be entirely safe in my own home. Instead, I took my camera phone and my laptop and I took a photograph of Bubsy and I went out to the balcony and got online and tried to work out exactly what kind of creature she might be. I ran Google image searches for bobcats, wolverines, Tasmanian devils, without asking myself how one of those might have got to Israel, and found nothing that really matched. And so finally I posted a photo on a question and answer site. And then I started to work on my book, but feeling sleepy, not having had much rest the night before, and it was another hot day. After a couple of hours, I just kind of passed out on the table. And I awoke only to the sound of dishes clattering in the kitchen. And I walked back through with my laptop and said, Hey babe, you know, I was trying to find out exactly what kind of creature Bubsy is. And my words ran dry when I saw Karen's look of silent fury. Really? So that's what kept you so busy all day. Too busy, it seems, to prepare anything for us to eat or even give any food or water to Bubsy? Poor thing must be starving. You know, it must be nice to think about yourself all day long. So that's what I've done tonight. I've made dinner for me and Bubsy and you can try the pizzeria around the corner. If you have any money, if you ever plan on finishing that book of yours. It'll come as no surprise to find out I slept on the kitchen floor that night too. And in fact, each of the following nights. And Karen was an Israeli, I was used to her outbursts of anger, but then some hours later she'd normally give me a shy smile and, you know, we'd jump into each other's arms and make up. But every time I went into the living room with the intention of crawling into bed, Bubsy was always there, between us, growing larger and larger by the day. Until after five nights of this, I walked in one morning and... Bubsy was there, staring at me behind that greasy wall of hairs. I said, look, I don't know what you are or where you came from or why Karen loves you so much. She's not welcome, you hear me? Well, if she's not welcome, then neither am I, Karen cried, proving not to be quite as asleep as I thought. And if you don't know why I love her, how can you say you love me? Well, I didn't find any answer to that, so I just stormed out. Returning to the apartment only a couple of hours later when I was sure that Karen would have gone off to work. And when I walked in, my first impression was that thieves had been there. Because in the kitchen, all the cupboards were open and there were packets of food burst open all over the floor. But it was only when I saw the teeth marks in the fridge I guessed who must be responsible. I picked up a heavy wooden rolling pin. I walked through to the living room to teach Bubsy who was boss once and for all. But I had second thoughts as I saw that she had now grown so big 
Not only did she dominate the entire mattress, but now her greasy hairs and the back of her head brushed against the low ceiling, leaving grease marks there. I put down the rolling pin and took up my laptop and walked through to the balcony. Remembering that question and answer thread I posted a week before, there was a whole stream of answers, all saying pretty much the same thing. Do not let this creature into your home. It took over our house and our lives. Don't feel sorry for it. It knows exactly what it's doing. And on and on in exactly the same kind of voice. Well, that evening when Karen came home, she found me waiting outside the apartment for her with some sandwiches and a bottle of wine. And reluctantly, she allowed me to drag her down to the beach to talk things through. I tried to make her see that things had been just fine in our lives. Everything was going just great until Bubsy had come along. And if only we could be just alone again, the two of us. Things would go back to normal, she would see. Karen just listened to me, her eyes far away, until I ran out of things to say. And then with this glassy, distant look in her eyes, she said, You know, Bubsy would have died that day without us. I never could have dreamt you would be so cold-hearted and with that it felt like a door closed between the two of us we walked back to the apartment in silence Karen went for an early night and I lay down on the kitchen floor convinced I'd lost the woman I loved forever but I was wrong for that night, I heard a large thump, and then Karen came crawling through to the kitchen and into my arms, trembling, crying. It was all I could do to calm her down for several minutes before she could speak clearly and tell me what happened. I woke up. She was on top of me. I couldn't breathe. She takes up the whole bed. She takes up a whole life. I just stroked her hair and told her to calm down. If things would be fine, she would see. Just wait till the morning. And the next morning, we walked through to the living room, hand in hand, and saw Bubsy there, larger than ever, dominating the entire room. The whole apartment stank of her. And Karen started to move forwards, but I pulled her back. I said, no, she feeds on that. Karen nodded gathered her things, changed in the bathroom, and went out to work. We slept together on the kitchen floor every night after that, and though there were a few times that I caught Karen getting up in the middle of the night, she claimed she was only going to the bathroom. But eventually, day by day, Bubsy began to shrink in size, until after a week had passed, she was once again that pathetic little creature that Karen had found shivering in a shoebox in the rain. I offered to take her out myself, but Karen insisted it was something that she had to do. She scooped Bubsy up in the shoebox and walked slowly out of the apartment. And she was gone for an hour, and I began to fear that she'd given in again when I heard the key in the lock and Karen walked in, looking for all the world like a lost little stray creature herself. I won't say that our lives really returned to normal again after that, but we had several more good months together. And it was only every now and then when we were cleaning the whole apartment, we'd lift up a rug and find a thick, greasy black hair there. A reminder that there are some things that should never be fed. <laughs>